I'm back after a long hiatus. I think it's been a year since I uploaded any content. If you stuck with me throughout the entire time, thank you, thank you. I appreciate your subscription. And on today's episode, we're gonna do something really special. We're mashing together two of my favorite things to eat, and that's Filipino sinigang, sour tamarind soup, and hot pot. So without further ado, let's get started. Here's a quick overview of all the ingredients that we're gonna throw into our sinigang hot pot. Got your onion. You got your tomatoes, some daikon radish, some tamarind powder. If you can find tamarind paste or tamarind pulp, I highly recommend doing that. I grew up on this stuff, so I really do enjoy it. This right here, I was trying to find some mustard greens, but these are yu choy greens from the Korean market. Yu choy is not a traditional ingredient in sinigang, but you know what? Use what's available to you. I even put spinach in my sinigang and it's just as good. Got some green beans. Green peas? Green beans. Sliced pork belly. Save yourself a lot of time if you can find it sliced or cut it yourself. Or if you've got a good relationship with your butcher, ask them to hook you up and slice them thin like this. I love, love tofu in my sinigang. It's a sponge for flavor and it picks up all of that sour tamarind soup. Cool, let's get started. So we've got our two tomatoes here and I'm just gonna quarter them. I'm gonna share with you guys a technique that I like to use when I start my sinigang base. So I hate throwing away food. And when you throw this into your sinigang broth, what happens when you get to the bottom of the pot? Usually they just get tossed out because, or the skin of the tomato just turns into like this nasty plastic looking thing, right? So I've got a blender here. I'm gonna throw my tomatoes into the blender. Grab our onion. There's a lot of onion, so I'm only gonna use half. Pull the skid off, then we're going to quarter this guy as well. All this goes into our blender, our soup base. Into the blender. Both packs. For your soup base, add as much as you'd like, as sour as you want to go. In this household, we like our city gong sour, so I added two packs. I just added some water to our blender. We're going to put the top on and then we're gonna blend it until it's smooth. We're back from the blender and it should look like the weirdest smoothie you've ever made in your life. Grab yourself a stock pot and we're gonna pour this guy in. You get a nice smooth broth base. And for any of the straggling pieces here, I like to add more water. I just throw it into the stock pot again. Now we're here at the stove. Get your heat up to its highest setting. And we're gonna stand here and watch it until it starts to lightly bubble. Once we get to that boiling point, we're gonna turn it down to a low medium simmer and we're gonna let it reduce for a half hour. When it gets to that point, I'll show you guys what it looks like. While we're waiting on our broth, let's prep the remaining vegetables. So we're just gonna cut the stems off here. Save these for broth, vegetable stock, or if you're not down with that, throw it into a compost bin. Here. I'm cutting them into medium long pieces, almost the length of celery sticks. These cook quickly in a hot roaring broth, in a hot bubbling broth, in a hot pot of broth. They'll be ready in like 30 seconds to a minute. If you have a small baking sheet, you can conveniently place your prepped vegetables and meats on there. The stems are a little more robust, so I keep them fairly short. The leaves, they're gonna stay much longer. These cook way fast, so I'm gonna separate that and put them in their own pile right here. Our green beans. Green peas? Green beans, just gonna snap off these stems by hand, or if you're in a rush, you can bundle them up just like this. And then in one chop, they're done. I mean, if we're really being honest, in the time that it took you to pick it up and bundle it up like that, you could have quickly snapped it off like this. Much, much, much later. Green beans are done. Now, this next step, it's up to you whether you wanna cut them or leave them full length. I'm gonna leave them full length because I've got this pet peeve where vegetables get lost in the hot pot. Because you toss a bunch in, like five minutes later, you're in there fishing to get them out. 
and you can't find it because the pot is over full and you're fishing and you're fishing for that lost piece of vegetable and then it just turns into mush at the end of your meal. Bigger veggies, easier to find in your hot pot. Veggies looking absolutely green and fabulous. We're gonna put that aside and work on our tofu next. You guys, I forgot to salt our broth earlier. We're not gonna kill it with a ton of salt, just enough to liven up the flavors because that powder is full of sodium. So I just add a little bit of salt here. If you're using the paste, it won't come salted. So you're gonna have to salt and then do a taste test on your own. See what fits your palate best. We're gonna start cooking down those vegetables even though they got completely pulverized by the blender. We want those flavors developed. So we're gonna simmer this for a half hour. We'll come back to it. Gonna take this over to the sink and just get rid of all that extra liquid. Crap. All the excess liquid is drained. Here's an optional step. I have another baking tray here lined with paper towel. Just gonna drop my tofu on top of that. And we're gonna put a second piece of napkin over that. I'm gonna grab another baking tray. And finally, we're gonna put cast iron on top of the both of them. Oh, my cast iron is looking so sad. Guys, I haven't used this in a while. And this is what happens when you don't use your cast iron regularly and you mistreat them. You get surface rust. I'm gonna clean that up in another video. I've got some weight on there to press out any excess leftover liquid that the draining didn't quite remove. As that liquid releases, if your weight isn't centered on top of the tofu, it could lean one side or the other. Not a big deal. Tofu will still taste great, but it's just a visual thing and that bothers me. So I'm gonna let all of that liquid press out while we wait for our broth to get going. Broth, done. I don't know if the camera picked it up earlier, but before we reduced this, there was a lot of onion pulp, tomato pulp, and the skin's kind of floating around. Now it broke down and became part of our broth. And this looks great. So dinner is pretty much done. I just have to slice up the tofu. Once that's ready, I'll show you guys what it's like. But in the meantime, I'm gonna turn this to its lowest setting because I don't want it to continue to reduce and I'm gonna put a lid over the top. So it's actually been a couple days since I squeezed this tofu. Things came up, we didn't feel like hot pot that day. And that's just how it goes in our household. That gave me time to really flatten this piece out. Look at that, it's only about an inch and a half thick now and it's, it feels pretty firm and kind of dense. But that's what we're looking for because we want it to be meaty. Now I'm just gonna cut them into thin slices to mimic the pork belly. You don't have to cut your tofu as thin as I am. Go as thick or as thin as you like. You don't even have to do strips. You can do cubes if you prefer that. Let's get a zoom in really quick on the texture of this tofu. It really, really transforms when you squeeze all of the excess liquid out of it. The tofu gets pretty dense and it's got the texture of sliced cheese, like a Monterey Jack. So, align my meats here, or proteins. And it doesn't have to be pretty, but you definitely want to arrange it in a way that makes it easier to pick up when you're sitting around the soup and starting to eat. And I'm only going to go halfway because I still have a pork belly. You can organize your hot pot however you like. I like to put all of my proteins on one tray and then all of my vegetables on another. And then if you're gonna add noodles, put that on a separate tray. You know, I like my sitting with rice because it picks up all of that sour flavor. That is our tofu. It kind of looks like a cheese platter, doesn't it? I'm gonna line up our pork belly on this side. Let me go get that out of the fridge. Pork belly's out. Now I'm gonna do the same, same pattern as our tofu and arrange it onto our tray here so that it's easy to grab with chopsticks when we're cooking around the soup. So Sinigang is a pretty versatile soup. You don't have to use pork. You don't have to use tofu. Kissa's favorite Sinigang is shrimp. We don't have shrimp today, but she would really enjoy that. Since shrimp cooks fairly quickly, that'll be another good addition. I like, I like fish Sinigang. So typically if I have, if I'm just making it here at home, I'll do a salmon head Sinigang. Might be weird for some people, that, but that's one of my favorites. I just love the flavor. So this is a lot more pork than I thought. It's still a little bit frozen in the center, so my fingertips are just freezing here. But we're 
almost to the end of our pork belly package. Uh, if you can't find sliced pork belly, you don't have to work with pork belly. I just think the fat adds some nice volume and viscosity to the broth as you cook it. Um, but you could totally use pork loin, which is a little bit more lean. Ooh, it's super thin slice, I'll just put that right there. Or you can get pork butt. That's super easy to find it in most supermarkets. You don't have to find an Asian market. So you just slice that thin for yourself. Cool. That's our protein tray. Let's get into the shot right There we go, guys. And that's our protein tray. I'm gonna wrap it up in plastic wrap, throw it in the fridge until we're ready to eat. Since it has been a couple days since we started this hot pot, I was able to go to the market and grab some less traditional items that I'm gonna throw into this city gun hot pot. And this is shiitake mushrooms. I love shiitake mushrooms in hot pot. And I've never had it in Sinigang, but we're gonna find out what they're like today. So I'm just gonna pull out the stems. Two, move that side. And now you can get really fancy with it. And cut your X's into the tops of your mushrooms, your shiitake mushrooms. That looks pretty nice. It's a little bit time consuming, but you know, for the aesthetic. Or, if you don't like having whole mouthfuls of mushroom, just cut them into little slivers, just like that. I'm gonna do a combination of both. Grab ourselves another baking sheet. Good, good. And then our julienne mushrooms on this side. And just a nice mound, so we've got some height. I've got more mushrooms. King oysters. These are meaty bad boys. I like to cut off the tops. Slice them thinly. Just like that. And now with these stems, so the meat of this mushroom runs vertically along the stem. So it's got a very similar texture to scallops. So if you take a couple of these, just cut them like that. For our hot pot, these will help it hold on to more of the soup. I'm gonna do that to all of our king oysters. All right, that took forever, but it's gonna be worth it in the long run. Now we're just gonna organize this with the same concept as our protein tray. We wanna make it as easy as possible to pick up food and throw it into the hot pot. Nice, and put that aside. So our radish, I just broke it in half. I use the other half for something else. We're gonna do something really fun and interesting with this guy. I like a lot of radish in my city gun, and usually that takes a lot of stewing to get soft, but for our hot pot, the idea is like fast cooking. And if you cut radish too thin, it kind of just turns into mush, and that's not the texture we're looking for. So I had this idea, use the radish as a dipping sauce. One of my bucket list items is to learn how to kind of like peel it this way, but my knives, my knife skills need work. Got a bowl here, got my microplane, and now I'm just gonna straight into the bowl. This can go into the broth pile, just scrape the remaining off and put it here into our bowl. If it looks like a lot of radish, it's because I like a lot of radish. My Sinigang, use as much as little or none at all. Your Sinigang, your hot pot, you do you. This is just gonna get some plastic wrap and I'm gonna set it aside until it's time to eat. Since we're working on our dipping sauces right now, I'm gonna bring out another condiment that I love in my Sinigang and that is yellow chili. And in my household, we always had yellow chili in our city gong. So I'm gonna put it on the side as an optional condiment. Just cut them in. You can de-seed it if you want. That's where all of the heat is usually at. In the seeds and inside the, what do you call these? The centers, the roots, the vein. The vein of the chili. You can take it out, but like I said, I'm gonna keep it in. And then I've got a little bit of fish sauce. Well, not a little bit. I've got a big jug of fish sauce. Now I'm just gonna, Season that a touch, give it a quick stir. And then once the hot pot broth is hot enough, I'm gonna pour it over this as well. And that's gonna be our second dipping slash condiment sauce. So here's my broth that we worked on the other day. Like I said, we didn't feel like hot pot that evening that we prepped it. But the awesome thing is you can put them into these containers. You can freeze it to get more longevity out of it, or you can put it in the refrigerator and you can hold this for about a week. Here's an optional equipment item. I've got this split center hot pot pot, hot pot pot pot, hot pot pot. 
pour one of our deli containers of broth into there and the more shallow one on the opposite side. And the shallow one is gonna get more spice. So that second chili I had, I'm just gonna cut it right down the center like that. Open it up a little bit, give it a nice squeeze and drop it in there. I just put some tap water into the containers. A little bit of tap water to get the rest of the flavor off the sides of the walls. Just add that to our pot and look at that, we're about ready to go. All right, the hot pot is boiling and check out this spread. We got our proteins here as close as we can get it to the hot pot. That way you're not dripping any meat, raw meat juices on any of the vegetables. We got our hearty greens over here. This is our radish. Here's the yellow chili and fish sauce condiments. Mushrooms, wifey, a bowl with chopsticks for her. She's not having any rice, but of course, your boy's gonna have a little bit of brown rice. And without further ado, let's dig in. So obviously, you gotta have a separate pair of chopsticks for the raw meats. You don't wanna cross contaminate. Let's get a couple of these pork bellies. And then this side closer to me is the spicy yellow chili side. Swoosh it around, swoosh it around. And since it's pork, you want to give it a little bit extra time to cook. Want to get right about there. We're going to let it cook a little bit longer. But while we're waiting for that, why don't we toss in some tofu? Ugh. That's the thing about these cooking chopsticks. They're so long and heavier than your standard eating chopsticks. It's a little bit difficult to pick up, but you get used to it. I'm not quite there yet. You want some mushrooms? Okay. Uh, this one. A couple of shiitakes. Our meats. All right, that looks ready. So we're gonna use our eating chopsticks to pull the cooked stuff out, just cause I, I can't trust that this won't be sanitized or cooked down enough. I got a ladle here that I'm just hanging above our pot so that we can grab soup. So yeah, if you have an electric burner, I don't recommend this one. <laughs> so buy something else. It takes forever to get hot. And as you can see, as we added the cold meats and cold vegetables to the broth, it, it stopped boiling. And it's gonna be a minute before it gets there. But I have the lid off to the side. I'm just gonna put it on top to get it boiling again. Get a little bit of this broth. While it's still hot, and pour it into our yellow chili and fish paste. Fish paste, sorry. Yellow chili and fish sauce condiment. Give that a stir with my chopsticks. Let's see if I can fish out my piece of meat here. A little piece. Put that on top of my rice. So one of these yellow chilies. And on top of my meat. That looks like the perfect bite for me. So here we go, Cinnagon hot pot. First bite. Mmm. That's legit. I think my rice. Sorry, I'm gonna talk with my mouthful. I think my rice needs some of the broth, but otherwise, I'm shocked at how much flavor of the broth the pork picked up in just the couple minutes that I was cooking in it. What'd you think, um, like? So good. Do you get Sinigang vibes? Yeah. Do you get hot pot vibes? Yeah. Cool. So, like once a week? Every day. Every day. Jeez. <laughs> Very easy to prepare. And look at our, our vegetarian scallops here. I called them vegan scallops earlier, and then I suggested cooking them in butter. <laughs> but look at that. The broth is seeping right inside the cross hatching. Shiitakes are getting nice and spongy. They feel like they're ready. Oh, I'm looking for that tofu now. Where are you? Oh, yep. yeah. You. Over here. To my rice bowl. And yeah, I'm gonna contaminate. It's just me and Kissa eating. She's had all of my germs. Put that on top of the tofu. Get a little bit of radish. A little bit of radish. And 
time, but this time I'm gonna do it right. I'm gonna grab a little tiny splash of broth right on top of the rice and tofu. And I have a spoon here because I know I won't be able to hold this up with chopsticks. Right, so big bite with the tofu, radish, and yellow chili condiment. Mmm! Mmm! Mm -hmm. I'm speechless. Clearly, you can tell this is my first time doing it. I I probably should have done it one time before I decided to make a video, but I was super excited to share this experience with you. And all these, all these reactions are genuine. Unless you talk a mushroom. Probably gonna burn the roof of my mouth. It's worth it. Mm. It's a little hot. Not too bad though. But yeah. I would have never guessed mushrooms go well in Sinigang. I'm sure there are a couple households out there that regularly put mushrooms in the Sinigang, but this is my first experience with it. So Kiss and I are gonna start eating. Um, I'm sure you guys don't want to sit there and watch me pig out, but I want to thank you guys for sticking with the channel. First video in over a year. And you know what, I'm highly motivated to continue filming. And I want to bring more of this stuff to you guys because over that time, I actually spent it researching, learning, and developing my skill and expanding my flavor horizons. And I can't wait to share all that stuff with you. Thank you again for tuning in. I love you guys. And I'm gonna go fill my belly. See you at the next video.